We all know that there are how many one two how many types of analysis in the level of we have the three balances from one of them. You're going to do a bucket of different kinds of analysis. Can you tell me other types of analysis? Predictive analysis. Then then it is predictive analysis. Any other one? Prescriptive analysis. That so let me just still add that. Then, uh, any other one? Descriptive. Okay, I'll help for that. So it might be debatable, but when I explain why they call it separately, there is also exploration. So, let me just uh, explain what all those pockets are. Uh, well, you can, there are not too many, so I, I don't need to write them again. I'm too used to it. So let's start with the number one one, the one that we are all very familiar with. Data description, that's what we do a lot in business, right? So management and uh, the business folks, they tell you, or if you're one of them, you'll be the one telling you that this is what you want to see on a daily or a weekly or a monthly. On monthly basis, right? And typically, you want it to describe what is happening. So, you want to see maybe how sales, how your sales are doing day by day, by some different other dimensions, maybe by product, by region, by sales person, right? So, we do a lot of descriptive analysis. In fact, some people begin to think descriptive is like the whole of what you can do in Excel. Uh, so, that's descriptive analysis. You are basically looking through the data you have, going from that raw data to the insightful report, something that you can look at and you need to see the kind of patterns you want to see, and begin to be more knowledgeable about what is happening as regards to all the data you have gathered, especially the same data. Then there is the predictive analysis. So what most of us do in business is um, we do magic numbers. You know what we call magic numbers? Let me tell you what. So maybe I'm a salesperson, and then I get to work today, and my manager calls us all of these salespeople and say, oh, we have an emergency meeting. So you know what? Uh, we had a meeting with management say, last week, and a whole lot of things have, 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 have come up. Your targets are going to be changed. And so maybe you used to do, say, 100 million per month, and they say now your target is 150 million per month. And when you try and ask, how did they come up with that figure? It becomes the case of typical. If you want your own you want to better start working towards achieving it, right? The magic number, the math falls from somewhere. You can't really say this was the calculation they need to come up with that. This is the number you should do, right? So it's very common. MD says we want to do 20% next year. Then everybody starts working. 20% came from, I don't know, maybe during shower. And then <laughs> everybody has to start. You know, getting some other magic numbers that uh, the few will help us arrive. This magic number, uh, my cap is an Indian, my cap. That's why it's I understand he wants to do his magic number. So you yeah, actually have his own secret thing that uh, he uses to, like, that's what he does that I do. Then there's a the second one. We do moving average a lot. So we look at how you've been doing for like the last couple of uh, years, periods, and you've been doing 10 percent on here or that. Present month on month. Okay, if we ordinarily do this, I want you guys to work harder. So you are not going to get two percent, maybe you do three percent on what the basis becomes that moving average. Right? So those ones are very easy to do in Excel. The magic number, you don't need to do any work, just ask the person giving the magic number, whatever it is, right? And then when it comes to moving average, you now do average of the last couple of periods. What about the much more intense one? The ones that uh, people who are with and say, oh, data analysis, oh, this you can't do in Excel, oh, this you come and learn Python, you learn how, 
What about those ones? Are you now left helpless when it comes to that? And you're like, okay, if it's that, I'm not, my hands are hot. I'm going to do that to those things, I'm going to do that. Where? Well, no. If you're an Excel person like me, you don't have to go learn. Where do you learn something new? But why are you learning those things? Also, you need to know that there's something already provided for you that you can take advantage of in the Excel. Right? So that's prescriptive. And someone said prescriptive. So prescriptive, that's why I think you quote, because to be, it's when you combine predictive with action. So maybe now I put in a predictive analysis that can predict when, uh, say, a particular product is going to go out of stock. So maybe we have a warehouse, we have some logistics. And so that thing does prediction, and then you want it such that anytime a product is going to go out of stock soon, it makes generate a request for, for quotes and sends to all of your vendors, right? It's just the information part. There's nothing more to the description than the information side. And then maybe the feedback if you want, but the feedback loop is still part of it. It's not like something that once you put it in, it makes it together, right? And then there's exploration. The exploratory is much more like what people do in the medical line, those who are into the uh, technology line. I have a friend that that's what he's into. When he starts talking about what he does in medicine, I'm like, are you doing medicine or you're doing like, programming? So they call it uh, uh, sequencing, or then sometimes we used to call that uh, just like uh -huh, those kind of things. And especially what they are doing, their mind is blank. When you're doing bits, when you're doing descriptive, you have an idea of what the end goal is, right? Exploratory is one thing, you don't have anything in mind. You just look at all the data, you have to look for patterns. So you start doing, maybe you start doing clustering. So the kind of things you do are different from descriptive. You start doing like clustering, you start doing K, generating uh, your Some people do market basket, market basket analysis in the business line. So they gain a segmentation. And begin to look at it, and that is a bit of kind of exploring your job, trying to make sense out of it. Okay, so let's, that's the predictive I'm going to talk about. We're going to do things like, um, we're going to predict a load situation to give people load, and then you want to run things like logistics, regression, all those things people mention when they talk about data science, and you're like, I a lot of these things, I can't find a formula that I've got in the stats in Excel. Then the second aspect is the Excel JavaScript has. How many of us are familiar with it? You've heard of it. Okay, you've heard of it. So we know that DD um, is more like when you decide that the Excel that you have, you know, what everyone uses, huh? you want to go and pull those ready made things inside. You want to do things like automated completion from scratch, from A, start to end. And so you do BB. Program the whole thing, what you create is already transferred to the program on that. Why do you to write the program on that? So instead of you having to do that today. So I do this a lot to automate reports of people where it takes hours. But then there's something in JavaScript. So this one is a whole completely different story. When we get there, I'll explain. So let's start with the first one predictive analysis. So uh, I hope you can see what I have in the on screen. Let me explain what you are looking at. Say you work for a microfinance or a loan giving company, right? You are interested in giving loans to regular guys like us. That's why I said microfinance, not to big banks. The big banks, they look for So if you now want to put some level of automation, you know, do more with your data, right? So you have people who are taking loans from you before. And then there are basic information about them that you feel are useful. So their names, their gender, their age, their marital status, their employment uh, status, the location where they live, or then their monthly salary range, and then the loan amount they took, and then uh, whether they eventually be paid for the deposit or so. Now this is information that is Value that if you have someone who can do predictive analysis, you can look through it and find the pattern. And there are some people who, when you profile them, so like profiling, 
when you look at their own characteristics, do they kind of fit into the kind of people that they force or the people that you know, they pay, right? So how can I do this later? In the where I'm going to do an algorithm that we're going to use a classification because they two out the kind of situation. It's either you pay or you pay. So that's like binary. You pay or you pay. So we'll use something like a binary classification algorithm. And then you want to come up with ability for me to just approach you, ask for your details, and I put it into the Excel stuff we're going to view. And it will predict whether you are likely to perform or to be able to guess. I can do the full down to Excel. Which programming are you going to use? PHP or um, But the whole the idea would be to first of all um, identify what factors, you know, what factors you determine for you to go left or right. And, and, like for one, the minute I saw the list, I want to say unemployed, no. But then, if you look at the monthly salary, some unemployed people are paying any above a million. So there are things like investments and T deals and other ways that they make money. So if you can't just say no, please on So you have to, and sometimes, maybe you have to pick some factors in between you know, both. And also, besides going fully yes or no, they will complicate it a little bit more. By same percentages, like if somebody is unemployed, you their yeah, percentage reduces by thirty, you know, and then the total, and then the computation. Oh, okay. And the total yeah, yeah, comes. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, building the algorithm yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that will not be proper because uh, yeah, so yeah, you're supposed to use something that you're not the one. There's no bias from you. Okay. You're the one who knows an unemployed person. Now you really should not be well off. But then, no, you don't want to fire, so you want the authority to put that out yourself. Okay, I, I, I think should Yes, sir. Maybe if you had units, if you had um, numbers somewhere behind the age attached to any of these columns, you can do, maybe go seek and see where that number is above or beneath the particular range. So if I say anybody, if I do this profiling, anybody who has less than 50 means it will be false. So I probably just now set a go seek. Program at the end and said, just look for the guys who have to do the picture. Okay. Uh, look at your loss amount. What about looking at your loss amount and considering the those who have the like, highest loss of what um, and similarity do they have? Is that what you want to do? No, no, no. Okay. The thing you say is really interesting. Uh, before I came up on this thing, if you give me this kind of problem in Excel, I'm going to think in terms of. I start thinking of, okay, is there something I can do that can translate into a formula that can... Because the good thing is, if you know statistics, you can always do this from first principle. And you know first principle means it doesn't matter what you have, right? You can complete things out to so There was a feeling I had to look for some people who went to do that. We had to use Excel to do something like this. But what we did was, we did a uh, regression, a regression. But then regression is not the best for a binary outcome. So we said, okay, let's try and have a map of the regressive integrated in It's more complex than what we're doing, but then there's no have to be. So we are trying to stretch Excel and be writing the formulas and be like using that here. And there was a whole lot of work that we think we wanted to do when I did it. Because at the point we switched to R. When we did it in R, people were like, why do you not think of all the stress in there? Because it's just a, a line code. You load this data as a data frame and just type one thing to do some specifications. And all what you spend like one day doing in Excel in like the five minutes, you leverage what someone has done, right? And that's what I want to show us. How you two can leverage this new thing that I want to take us through. So I'm saying, is it possible to do this? Well, uh, uh, <laughs> I, I was hoping you would ask me, am I really sure about that? Are you really sure in Excel to do things like uh, boosted, boosted uh, logistic regression or random forest? Uh, okay, what are you? Uh, one of those programs I'm not really like this for. 
for doing some of these things, but at the right now they are too common for us. So we are going to find out. Are you ready? So we're going to do a demo from scratch. Uh, again, I might have to be at the back in meeting for this one because I need to do some. Uh, Okay, so I can go back from now. I can just like keep all over there. So this is the raw data. It's uh, about five thousand records. Huh? What we want to do is. or a data scientist, what you're going to do is we will build up something that we learn from this, that we look at, okay, the people that typically report, what are the characteristics they typically exhibit, those that uh, we pay, what are those unique characteristics, right? And then it weighs them. So there might be some characteristics that are kind of like non-significant. People default habit as well as people default. Then you might be lucky that out of maybe six, seven characteristics, there might be three or two that you kind of you see a bias. So people exhibit the ones they repay. And people maybe don't exhibit that they, they default, right? So you want your algorithm to do that. And you will want to be you want an algorithm that can keep relating. So the more you get more data, maybe every three months, you put it in you because things change. No life is not permanent, right? So that's what we want to achieve. But then how do we achieve it? Are you ready? So it will be a small GT. Have you heard of the Azure? So that is the body of it's an embodiment of all Microsoft Cloud solutions. So meaning that uh, anything we want to do that we want to be able to leverage instead of building things our own self from scratch, we want to leverage existing and the minute so that you can communicate with every single of the other one, which is what we're going to do, communicate also with Excel, right? That's what we will now use to achieve what I want to show you right now. So what I want to show you right now is a... So this is what we want to do. Let me just be very obvious. So what I have is some random people. I can even ask one of them to volunteer. But so let me just do it first before I start getting volunteer. So I have some random people that I have here now. I've gotten their names. So maybe the marketers have gone out. Or so if you even uh, integrate this with a uh, with a web platform or a Google form or a Microsoft form, you know, uh, Microsoft has also the equivalent of So if you integrate with that such that you can give a form and, and that at the back end begins to populate an Excel sheet uh, with their name, gender, age, you know, all this information that you may ask them that for them, they just understand that you are trying to know your customer, but they don't know that if you are going to use it to take something more meaningful decision than just having it on the file. So I now have the amount they want to request for. I need something to predict. At least the first level verification. Someone can still take an intervention at all. But let's first run into the machine, right? So let it tell us if these guys are good fit or not. So I'm going to select the data that I have about them. I'm going to, uh, I, will, uh, I will show you how where you may do this thing in Excel. But let me just demo for you how it works. So I, I pick that and say yes. And then I need you to put the outcome here for me. And 
So I think we are on the outcome to be. The book is pixelated, right? Yeah. Let me see if I can improve this resolution. Oh, 
So the way to try it out is this. Studio dot Azure ML dot net. It's free account, everything is free. Don't pay subscription. I don't think there's anything you want to do. Please as a studio dot Azure ML dot net. So once um, you go there, you log in. If you don't have an account with Microsoft, it's fine to create. Create it doesn't mean you have to like create a new image. You can the same way when you buy a new phone, like Android, you can use any of the so this one is going to be And uh, for me, because I'm logged in, I'll just uh, go straight to my experiment. That's the best place it takes you to. So once you log in, this is what you will also see in your own case. So once you sign up and log in, uh, because I'm already used to, uh, you know how close work, you want to explain to you, this is where you see the menu on the left. Then you log out on the right. So it's not useful for us, but uh, as yet to guide. So when you log in, let me just see if I can make this video clear. So this is how it works. The data that I want to use to make the prediction, so the raw data that I want to use to do the algorithm, because you must build up the algorithm first, right? I already have the data. This is it. So you would have given me your, your data, and then I will have it already like this. This is even in CSV file, whatever format you need, right? So this is what I will use to build, to train the model, to build the algorithm. And then this is how, once I have that, I go to this place. I say I want to create an experiment. So I want to create an experiment. I do new. Uh, that new, this, this is, can you see the new? This is that new. So once I click on that new, it will say you want to create. They have a lot of samples that you can use to get familiar with how it works. So you begin to see some things that you know you will like, oh, okay, this is possible. You can analyze it, you can do all kinds of predictions. So you can knock yourself out for the experiment there. But we'll do a blank experiment. So I'm going to click a blank. So that way I create from scratch. So when I click on the black, it gives me the generic name, right? So I'm going to give it a name that I feel is relevant to what I want to do. I want to do a low prediction. Uh, so once you give it the name, you don't have to do anything of the same, right? And the first thing that we want to do is I want to bring in the data that uh, I have that I want to use to You can't do analysis without it. Uh, so all the time you say, you can do this, you can do that. And then you forget about the DB guys or the guys who gather the data and you know, you know. So uh, I already thought in the data, it's, it's very easy to bring it just to import it in. So I have it as my data set. Let me see if I can show you that step. So it doesn't look like that. <coughs> there's on this left side of the experiment, there's projects, there's web there's web some things. The one that I want to talk about is the data set because that's where you typically will start. So I want if I want to bring in a data set, the new is here. Uh, there is on the lower left. You see the new again, right? Yeah. So that's where I'll click. And then I say I have it in my computer, and I go pick it 
So once you do that, you will see it show up here. So I'm just going to take what I have. This is drag and drop. So this is, you're not going to be typing, doing anything to your Everybody knows how to do drag and drop. You don't have to go learn that one in the special training. So I drag in the data set, right? So I think at this point I can go back to the one because everything I need to do is drag and drop. It's similar to the drop. Uh, so you're beginning to find some things you use that are similar. What I bring in data? When you want to do a trade an algorithm, you want to separate your data into training sets and testing sets. Right? It doesn't make sense to use all your data to build an algorithm. How do you not test the accuracy? So you split it maybe into like maybe 60 40. Use 60 to do the algorithm, use 40 to test the accuracy. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to say I want to split the data. I need to split it, I drag it there too. And then I connect it to I connect this to this. And then I say you should split it in a I'll rather instead of it here, I'll maybe want to use 60 40. So it's always the left that you're controlling. So that left, whatever you put here is going to be the ratio of the data that will be on the left side. And then I am going to now say this data, uh, by the way, I, I, there's something I would, I would like to do here. You know, we have their names. I don't know if you remember what they're doing. Their names are said, but we don't need their names to do prediction, right? So I'm going to tell the model that I don't need their names for the prediction because. How will your name determine whether you pay or not pay? Uh, so I want to even select some of the. I'm going to say I don't want to use all of the data. I want to select. It's a lot faster if I can just type what I want to do. It has a tool, it has like a search. So once you say this is what you want to do, you type something like the long tail line, select columns. So I'm going to do that. In fact, I'll prefer to do that before the whole speed. So when I select column, I get this launch column selector ticket. I am going to say the columns I want to include. So you see, I'm starting all the columns. Because I want to do it faster and it's not letting me do it really faster. I'm running out of time. Okay, let me just quickly show you what it will look like when we are done. So that because the doing it is just dragging and I'll be faster if I show you what you'll be dragging. So that will focus more on the aspect because I still I have like just two minutes in a second. So I'll show you what it will look like. All the things that I, I was planning to drag there and then the end result. So this is You 
not say that this was where we, the data, right? The select, where I'm going to select the columns that I need to use. So this is what I was trying to show us here now. So I picked the columns I want, or it's wanting me to type one by one. So yes, I think I'll need right? And then uh, I split the data now. So the only column you took out is the one containing the names. Yeah. That's what I don't need the names. That's the yeah. That's yeah. The yeah. All the other columns in the data set are there. Yes, yeah. 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 except me. So I then bring in the split. So I do the split, which is, I even use the 70% there, right? Then it splits into. So 7 to the left, which would be my training set. Then 30 to the right, which would be my test set. And then uh, I bring the. Let me just increase the two sides. It, uh, it, does, it 
very well with this kind of data. So I'm going to try to see regression. It's like regression, but more around those two kinds of outcomes. So I drag that in. Then I'm going to bring in evaluate model. So evaluate the model. I bring that in. I connect the output of the model to the evaluate model. I connect the other output of my split data to the other side that will have to be testing, right? And then uh, To expand, but I will do the entire step. Okay, so like this. Have you seen the entire From the loan, it's left to lock the split to the split regression, the train is called, and then it's evaluated, and then this part is connected to the other one. So once that is done, I run it, this is run, and after I run it, I will deploy. Then you run the model, you run the model, then you deploy it, and then you show you deploy it. So if you run the model, so if I run it, So it's trying to deploy, huh? I 
can quickly switch while that one is doing, so it's running, you'll see something rolling, right? I can switch to the completing part of my. Once that's the last stage, you'll see an Excel file you can download that you can now type in, I can type in anybody in my automatic. Just watch it on So that's the predictive side, and everything as per all the different types of predictive algorithms are there. So that's the predictive side. I think you know it's possible, and I'm showing you how to do it to some extent. Not as good as I was looking. I'm talking about the questions, but I just want to also make sure that I show you the next part too. The next part of the presentation, which is the uh, Excel, JavaScript, and right. I asked us that we are familiar with DBA, right? And then. Uh, so this is the one I'm just doing. The other one is the new hiding experience. So this one, those of us that are IT clients, you might really, really enjoy this one. Because one of the problems you have with the we have with the existing PDA kind of adding is the fact that uh, you it can be exploited. I know some companies that they disable it something like this. So if you try to put in any program that has a VBA, it's not going to run, right? So what are the ways you can deploy things that your company can use without you having to go to the rounds of VBA? That is Excel like that. If you're using Office 365, thank you. If you use Office 365, huh? if you go to Insert, you will see how hmm? this. Use Office. It's 2013 and 2016. But uh, if you use Office 365, you get a lot more options of what you can uh, explore. So if I do this get added, you will see it just can be writing stuff using the app versions. Or if you use the updated version, you see get added. The moment you click on this, right, it's going to show you a whole lot of uh, tools that you can use beyond what is needed in Excel, right? And then uh, if you scroll down, you can keep going through, you'll see some that are useful for you, some might not be. And then uh, as I scroll down, scroll down, are you seeing something looking familiar? Can you something saying Nigerian market data? Yes. I did that and I put it up. So you can do something too if you, it's not just your organization, if you want to do it, something anybody can install, right? And so, like in my case, what I built is something like an allow people to use. And so in other cases, so you solve the problem of distributing your... Aha, they can even pay you, you can put a price to it. So it solves the problem of distributing, you've done something, then you have to start doing paying for marketing. People can just see it without me having to give them a link to it. And then if you do hard, instantly it will add it to your, to your Excel, right? And then it opens up and... So what I've done with it is what I've done with it is, I made it possible for you to pull information that we all like to get from Nigeria. Like, you want to know what the FX rate is. Who doesn't want to know what the parallel is of the FX rate? It's one of the commonest things people keep telling me about it, and that's the aspect they want to know. So I go there, I say I want to see the exchange rates. And instantly, it shows it and shows it to me, right? I want to see maybe the stock market. I mean, two stocks, right? I want to see what the closing market price is. It's a new food stock and shows me. And so today is a 20, what? It's showing me for 29, because that's the last market, day, right? What if I want to know what it was, say, this same period last year, right? If I type in, so if I type in this same date for last year, 2018, I think 6, I think 29, and I click it and I say, get me for that same date. So maybe they are on Zoom, maybe that's a good call. Let me give that a last name. Close to Let's even go two years back. 
lesson 27. I like the date. See? And you look at the date, right? So this can be good for those who have investment portfolios. You can be able to go back in time. And the same thing even for the exchange rate. You're an accountant, you know, you guys forgot to put the closing month uh, exchange rate. You can type the date. Okay, what about 2019, uh, 03, end of the month, or whatever it is? I want to get what the exchange rate was that period. And I think you know that particular date for the elected date. And to get it out for you. And if you are the if you like CPN, this was the one I put there before. People said nobody, even CPN doesn't want CPN rate. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a CPN rate and Naira is you know. Also, all those things are there, but the thing I want to bring to your attention is how do you build some lines? Because the key thing is you want to make it See, I didn't have to install anything. You can use it only on your phone because the same functionality exists on your phone. And then, even when IT puts the password to your, to give you all these limited rights and you can't install stuff, this does not work with them because you're actually not installing anything. You're only enabling something that they already in Excel, right? So, how you do this is, uh, uh, this is the part where some people might be like, okay, and now I know it, but I'll give it to some other guys. <laughs> you need to have, uh, yeah, you need to have visual studio, and then you build it inside here. But at least you know it's possible. So if you have a very large organization that you work in your IT side, this is something you can leverage. with. There are some companies, what they do is, if you go here, so now we are getting to the question time. If you go here, the same place I went to do the get addings, right? You will see my organization. I don't know if you. So there is a place where, if I go there, there is a place called my adding, and then it has been managed. Has been managed is an organization you can publish addings that are just for your people in your company. So that way is another way to deploy things. Maybe like that exchange rate. Or so I've come to the end of my presentation. Unfortunately, the one that I was really wanting to show how you take it. Okay, it's finally done. Okay, deploy. So you say if I deploy, I can go back. And then once you deploy, any question? So I can take question as you are down. So once the deployment is done, aha, can you see something like, let me just close all these things that are going. Can you see that I can download the Excel file? Ah, this is the magic of it. Is this is what I now download? That now makes it easy. Like you open it, you now see the same experience you saw me use to answer, and then I can type in any question which is looking right now. So you now see the thing that you saw me using the demonstration, right? This is the, that's the only bit that is outside of Excel. The moment you do that, everything you see right here, you saw that bubble that we saw the other time. So this is how you use it. Any question? Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. I saw you use Chrome. Scrum model. Okay, yes. Yeah. What, what did you do with that? Okay. Uh, the, in picking the correct model, or whenever you go in the model, it's already to evaluate how it performs as regards to the testing, the testing in the database, right? So that's what that Scrum model does. But because of time, I couldn't show you the results. This is the way you have you know, the so this one we now give you is a technical way of it. We call it um, is this a true positive confusion matrix. I don't know if you've heard of the parameters. So it's very good to see true positive, false positive, then it's called your accuracy and severity was using like a way to use the testing. So that's what I think that one will show you. Sorry, it's a question. Sorry. What logic do you use? 
how did you work? Because you just showed that you did it, but what logic did you have in that situation? How did you determine it? Ah, very good question. Uh, remember I said that everything can be done from first place. This question is the, the regression model I did. What did I put as my parameters? Did I, did I set the features? Did I do something? The good thing with this um, off-the-shelf uh, product is they can iterate, they can find the best setting. I don't know if you have this forecast sheet in Excel. I do know what. If you go to data menu, you will see something called forecasting. How many of you have this? This for forecasting sales data is a time series tool. But if you if you don't know the statistics behind you, kind of take it as trivial. What it does is what we call uh, triple exponential smoothing. Like it finds seasonality, finds trend, finds the uh, error factor. That thing I've said, if you try to do it. You know, outside of Excel or manually, you can use like the old days. But they put them there, right? And the thing is, because they don't expect you to be statistician, the thing will automatically determine similarities. It will automatically do all those things. So that way they program some of those things, right? Now, even if you're a new, you, you're a new you don't know how to use these things, it will always find the best settings by itself because it can also score itself and evaluate. So that's, I don't think it's for that, you know, specifically. I'm doing a competition and I want to get like accurate results and I want to have like higher score kind of stuff. Uh, yes, sir. So share with me on some of you. So you inherit this data set that you used to train the model. And three months down the line, you still get still the same with you collect more data. So you say we have more data that you used to complete the database is bigger. Do you go through this entire process again? So if you use this thing we have done, huh? it's just the data set to the space and just recall the so that thing I was trying to deploy. So you will not you don't even need to redownload this guy. You can just go to now replace the data model there, tell it to update it. And then have some structure. You can keep the data in the new environment. So I just want to confirm that it's not a fast school. Right? Around the sleep data set, like 60, 40, 70 years. Does it have any implications for the outcome of the model? Okay. So, I don't know if you are heard this thing very today. There is always a significant population, like a sample, significant sample. If you, there is this formula. It's almost like a rule of thumb, there is a formula to do that. It's even easy to find out. You can go online and say, I have a population of 2 million. What sample size can I take as representation? So that's what people even do all these elections and government and all these uh, polls use. So they know that this data is not what they need before they can statistically say this is resource, this is value, right? So the first thing is once I know that amount, I now look at my data set. If I have a data set of say 5,000 records, and when I do that thing, and based on maybe all our customer base, say 2 million customer base, if the, what you can Google it, I don't remember the formula, but you can call it something like the people have built tools around you say enter the population size, click OK, then the sample size you get. So everything says I need a sample size of 2,000. If you give me, in fact, me as a consultant, I will ask you, give me, I will have done that and say, give me, I will do this, I will say times five of it, because people can come down. <laughs> They're like, oh, you need all these numbers, okay, just give me my of what you ask me. So I will now use that. Back to how it ties to your question. Now, when I know I have 5,000, but it is I need 2,000, then in that case, I'm, I can go, I can, as long as all I put on the testing side is more than 2,000, so there's no more room. Or if I now have 3,000, then there's a problem. I must apportion a lot to the testing side so that it meets that uh, sample size requirement. So, two, that, sorry, two more questions. So, yes, sir. Uh, just to recount the steps, so the select data set. Select from the split data. I bring in the data set. Bring in the data set. I select it. Because sometimes it's very common that there will be some things in your data that are maybe confidential or, or things that are very useful to be like That's what you select for. Okay. Split data. Yes, sir. Train model. Yes. Then uh, you said you start with two parts of logistic regression. Yeah, on that one. You change on 
That one goes to the train. So the train goes to the scores. So that scores, the train goes to the scores. Then the second side of the other spring filter goes to the other side of the score. Then now the, the score has only one output. So that one output goes to the evaluation. So, so after evaluate to run, you know, then so before you deploy it, you that evaluation, after you run, you can right click on evaluation and view result, view accuracy. So I will now click on that VR to show me that confusion matrix. How many are to even write in plain English terms? You can read confusion matrix, but you cannot read to write it 60% accurate, 40% accurate like to write it. So sometimes if I think the accuracy is not good, I can go and change the result according to my user and use another one. But after that, if I'm okay with it, I'll now So finally, how do you your variable machine learning pass? So it's all experiential, right? So, how do you refine the model so that it gets them either with each one or like easy access when you have new, new, uh, new data sets? How does that work? Is this something you have to do or the, um, it's already set up for you to sort of take in that feedback? And I think I have found the data with you as well. You know, I brought in the data as a CSV file. I didn't show you can connect to it like this. So, that would be better. So you can let it just connect to like the like So you don't always have to like be importing the the steps file. So the data goes the results adjusted. The only thing is when you connect to like the database, you might need to also specify that you shouldn't go and bring all the data <laughs> in your database. Maybe you should bring the last five thousand, maybe you don't have any test here. Select top one thousand like this. So that would be better. Come on, this side, you don't like asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you have a question. All right. So, from, I would say, the data science perspective, how much of the theory of statistics you are going to know for it to even be choose like the most successful algorithm? Say, like now, you know you're doing the binary classification, either zero or one. So, when do you know, um, how do you know when to use, say, no, I'm just saying, like, how do you know? Yeah, speaking in lingo is that. Depending on your data set, how do you know? How much of the theory do you need to know before you go? Yeah, once uh, my time is up, so I'll just also take a step so I'll provide the answer. Okay, so I, I, I don't know if the, the uh, geography has anything to do. Let me explain. So you have a data set, and that data set probably explains the American system, for example. If you bring it to the migrant setting, would there is there anything you need to do to account for behavior that what you get as prediction kind of like matches what happens to that? Like you don't just take a test and then just superimpose it on the migrant setting. So if, if a microfinance bank wants me to build a model, can I just go on and pick a model and then say this is how it is? Uh, and then three, down, three months down the line, you have to say, you told us you want to do happens all the time. Let me answer the question. So the question number one is uh, how do you know which algorithm to use, how do you know how you go about it? Do you not have to be good in statistics? Two things. If this is a path you want to follow, like you want to be a professional in that path, then you can buy a path to on that data lane. You have to be good in that basic statistics again. But if this is going to be a one off thing, maybe something you don't need to do well, it's not like maybe you want to switch career, then you can just read as it relates to what you want to do. I can Google that I want to do. Market basket, market basket analysis, or I want to do association. Or I can just Google and I will just focusly read on the things I want to do. I use that link and apply. So that's what sometimes I do when I have things that I know what I want to do. I just go and do that. Then the uh, question number two is uh, can you take something that someone has used outside of maybe in the US or some other continent and do what they do? Good thing is, data is not. We are the one that knows that this is Nigeria. The data doesn't know that. So the only thing is just that, again, the data might be different. So it's more about the data itself. So it's always good that algorithm might be similar, but it's good to run yours from scratch. You might use that person as a guide. Use that to do your first run. Then start fine tuning. But 
always never correct your state of power for a bad thing and like use it to wait. You will always have to do some kind of cases. Even in the same area, two different companies. Thank you very, very much.